Cal Rittenhouse has been out on a media tour lately, and yeah, for whatever reason, it's, it's fine, okay? As he's mostly just trying to raise up his uh, public image. He wants to tell his side of the story. His handlers are leading him out there. Fine, fuck it, whatever, if he's going to do it. And I watched a bit of this interview here that we're going to be taking a look at. It's Elijah Schaefer, who was actually out there that night covering the riots in Kenosha on uh, August 25th, uh, 2020. He was out there on that night, and... So this was kind of a uh, reunion of sorts. So it was his podcast for the Blaze anyways. But they talked about a bunch of things over two hours. And I haven't watched all of it. I just watched the first few minutes actually. And there's a bunch of broads on the panel. And it's kind of fucking annoying to listen to. So I might go back in and check on the rest of this. Because I've seen this one pop out on there. And it was something that I was very, very pissed off about at the time. And that was when LeBron James mocked him uh, for breaking down on the stand. Because he has PTSD, obviously, for fucking shooting a couple of people after just being basically a fucking sack of marshmallows for the first fucking 17 years of his life and yeah uh, publicly reliving that on camera it was a little bit traumatic but apparently no those were fake tears even though lebron james you know a fucking professional actor out there on the court but Kyle also seen that came across and he was also, you know, very active in the fucking meme game when it came to the trial itself. And he had some testy things to say about Banger as well, calling him a, a fucking piece of shit. OK, that was basically I'm not too sure if he said fucking, but he at least referred to him as a piece of shit prosecutor. And then he also wants to because ASU fucking turfed him or whether or not he was actually enrolled at the time was a little bit um, objectionable. So he's not allowed back on ASU's campuses to pursue a nursing degree. So he's looking at becoming a defense attorney so we can go after piece of shit prosecutors like binger who he had multiple fun things to say about as well at least in the part of the interview that i watched but then a little bit later on he started to dig into lebron and his response to the situation and apparently kyle was a lakers fan which yeah during the kobe days i would consider myself the same as well but lebron james is going to be lebron james and he's going to be one of the most overrated at basketball players of all time listen he's tremendous his athletic gifts are absolutely through the fucking roof but it's what's between the ears that's always going to keep him from being really good from being one of the greatest of all time and you know trying to be trying to claim that you yourself are one of the greatest of all time that immediately disqualifies you from that conversation. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a page out of Kyle Rittenhouse's book and blow away no um fuck you LeBron I think it's a straight, simple, and to the point, but uh, why did he have to say that? Well, because LeBron James is a piece of shit, and fuck you, LeBron. I think that basically goes without saying, right? Kyle Rittenhouse lashed out against NBA star and China's favorite son, LeBron James, for poking fun at his tearful testimony during the Kenosha shooting trial on Twitter last month. Rittenhouse, 18, who was dramatically acquitted in the show. Was it really dramatically? I, I don't think so. He, it was perfect self-defense, at least in, you know what, a... Um, Anybody who's not on Twitter's opinion, you know, the people who just kind of look at the video evidence and just kind of can fucking parse the facts out themselves. As acquitted in the shooting of uh, Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber going to that great skate park in the sky in the great, um, I don't know, daycare in the sky for Joseph Rosenbaum during Black Lives Matter protest and anti for riot and all the same thing, you know, to get all things together and then also blowing off uh, paramedic or at least aspiring paramedic gage grosskratz uh, bicep there so sucks to suck appeared on the you are here conservative podcast well it's the blaze so it's a conservative network hosted by elijah schaefer who is conservative i guess sort of on Monday, uh, when hosts began bashing James, because it's easy to do, so and he had two hours to fill. So, uh, during the trial, the Lakers player mocked Rittenhouse for breaking down while giving testimony in a Twitter post. He wrote, "What tears? I don't see one. Man, knock it off. That boy ate some lemon heads before walking into court." I don't know what that means, but again, I'd like to think I'm not a piece of shit, so I don't speak like that. Uh, but speaking to podcast co-host Sidney Watson and Elijah Schaefer this week, Rittenhouse hit back saying, I was really pissed off when I, oh, when he said that because I liked LeBron and I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, LeBron. Yeah. The less you know about LeBron, the more you probably like LeBron. Okay. Watson added, uh, you have to give the man credit. It took all four of his brain cells to construct that tweet. Ha ha ha. Ken left and suit. Ugh, women. As Rittenhouse joked and conversed with Watson and Schaefer, he also pushed back on the claims saying that he was a hero, uh, saying he did not like that narrative. Again, just, just a humble kid. Well, now he's 18, so the, I don't know the proper way to... The, the humble Kyle. 
There we go. That seems appropriate. I don't think I did anything heroic. I just defended myself. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, dude. Rittenhouse said, as he described the chaos of the protest last year that caused him to fire his rifle at multiple people. Yeah, you know, leaving out the fact that he was attacked. But hey, whatever, you do you. Well, hindsight being twenty twenty, probably not the best idea to go down there, he said. I can't change that, but I defended myself, and that's what happened. Based. Right now said that he planned to leave the incident behind him and attend Arizona State University in the spring. They have different ideas about the situation, but it'll probably die down before then, and these fucking woke tards will just, you know, move on to something else. I'm sure somebody will say something on Twitter that's an objectionable. Or rather, somebody did something back in the 60s where they can meet to a motherfucker about so don't worry about it it'll, it'll blow over by then the teen added that he wants to destroy the rifle that he used to kill two men and would rather sell it after watson suggested he can make a lot of money from it again women's one track minds oh, we're just having it destroyed rittenhouse reiterated i think that's the best thing and that's what i want to do with it yeah exactly just fucking move on from the situation the kid is clearly suffering he's not a kid anymore but whatever just the, at the time he was a kid he's clearly suffering from the fucking effects of that night why would you want to keep it around? You can just go ahead and fucking buy a rifle somewhere else. You're 18 years old. You have, you've been acquitted of all charges. You can just go out and exercise your Second Amendment rights off of the money that is going to be rolling in depending on whatever the fuck you want to do in the future. Just go ahead, move on from the situation, and sue a bunch of motherfuckers in the process. Let's go ahead and do that. How about that? And I still think because of the pending charges against Dominic Black, uh, that rifle is still, uh, it's integral to those charges there. So it's probably still in police custody so he's probably still years out from actually getting back that rifle so doesn't matter who cares but i really like you know what hey most of the shit that he's been saying in the different interviews that have been out there like it or not even though he still has kind of a it just goes to show you that he just tries to see the best in everybody because he's still going out there at least in the the part of the interview that i watched where he's still saying you know what everybody can still agree that black lives matter is a, you know, it's an idea that we can get behind right the idea that black lives matter and you know what doing all of that shit that people moved on from a long time ago just continuing to reiterate the point that yes the words black lives matter do in fact mean what they say that's fine but it's the ideology behind that that everybody else hates and that yeah if you're just gonna support that that's fucking retarded so for the most part what he's been saying has been pretty much spot on and then of course if he's gonna say that um lebron james can just go fuck himself in so many words i'm behind that one i'm behind him on that one and you know what hey i think there's probably no place safer than being behind kyle rittenhouse but if he's going to be dump dunking on LeBron James, um, he's not actually the only one. And it's somebody who's normally on him on his side is somebody who is, well, okay, I mentioned it earlier. There's another echelon, okay? Like LeBron James, great basketball player, but greatest of all time, that category, that's a strata that's only filled by maybe five people, maybe five people, okay? I would say that there's like, okay, for me, it's probably three people. And um, it's it's the names that you probably know. Obviously, Michael Jordan. For me, Wilt Chamberlain. He's probably my favorite basketball player of all time. Okay, like uh, maybe Shaq's in that strata as well. Kobe, uh, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, probably those guys are up there as well. And then, of course, you got to give the devil his due. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he's up there. Okay, he's the points leader of all time. The skyhook was undeniable, except for by Wilt a couple of times. But hey, you know what? Hey, it's left off of history and nobody has more individual records than Wilt Chamberlain himself. But I love Wilt, and he's probably going to be another topic for another day, especially when the days get a little bit uh, less newsworthy and even so we're still stretching. But LeBron James, uh, yeah, getting dunked on by one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, you love to see it. And as somebody who doesn't go around calling himself the greatest of all time, and he's calling out LeBron, okay? Uh, goats don't dance. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar slams Lakers star LeBron James for celebrating clutch shot versus pacers on november 24th with big balls dance yeah okay cool you you hit a shot at the end of regulation in november okay cool a regular season game the fuck are you doing stupid
LeBron James rendition of former NBA players Sam Castles. Yeah, really. Um, like when you're trying to model your uh, trajectory in life on uh, certain people, like normally your mentors, okay? You want them to be uh, wildly successful people, the best in their field. Like if you're going to be going into the business end of things, you want to be looking at guys like Ray Dalio. The, put the politics aside. You want to take a look at Trump and his real estate acquisitions, okay? Working on mindset and philosophy, you want to be taking a look at the greats like Marcus Aurelius, Frederick Nietzsche, Carl Jung, Jordan Peterson. Peterson. You want to be taking a look at all of those guys. If you're looking to be one of the greatest basketball players of all time, uh, Sam Castle is probably not a name that comes up in the first thousand, but hey, if you're going to be taking dance moves from somebody who played uh, most of their career from off the bench, you do you, LeBron. He just emulates people that uh, probably haven't fucked his mother, so I guess, maybe, to be fair. Uh, yeah, he was appropriating Sam Castle's big ball dance after... Oh, and it has drawn the ire of another Lakers legend, Hall of Famer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Lou Alcindor to his friends. Prior to the false positive of co or from COVID last week, yeah, who, which he went on to bitch about because he could actually give a fuck about anybody else. Oh, you know, these are COVID restrictions. Oh, they're pretty good. And until they aren't and you become affected, then, oh, we need to take a look at that. Can't wait for the China money to fucking run out on them. Anyways, yeah, James celebrated a clutch fourth quarter three-pointer during the Lakers overtime win in, uh, oh, over the uh, Pacers in Indianapolis on November 24th by grabbing his crotch and pantomiming giant testicles between his legs. All right, cool. That's a thing, right? Um, my, my favorite players of all time, regardless of the field, they normally had a motto like uh, Barry Sanders, um, Walter Payton, that always pretend, always act like you've been there before. Score a massive touchdown, you just flip the ball to the ref. You don't act like you're six years old. You don't act like you're Nicki Minaj's cousin. Anyways, uh, the dance originated by the 1994 sequel to the Major League, f to the film Major League. What? Oh, but uh, became popularized by the NBA by uh, Castle, a journeyman guard who now serves as a Philadelphia 76ers assistant coach. Again, yeah, top of his field. Uh, the famously mild-mannered Abdul-Jabbar did not appreciate James's dance. I take umbrage with that statement because he's really inserted himself into the social justice rhetoric. Okay, listen, and he wasn't even like the most targeted black man at that time anyways. Does the name Bill Russell ring a bell when the guy was out there winning one of his fucking 11 fucking championships in the 60s? His house was getting burnt down and broken into in Boston. So again, it's like famously mild-mannered. He's really, really beating the social justice drum. But prior to that, uh, Kareem was pretty based on a bunch of things. But you take the good, you take the bad, and you get to the fucking athletes, so whatever. Back to this, particularly coming from one of the game's most celebrated players. Yeah, and inarguably one of the greatest of all time. Now, for me, winning is enough. Abdul-Jabbar, a six-time NBA champion across, like, multiple decades. So, the guy knows wins, said on a Substack video. Substack? Weird. Um... Uh, why do you need to do a stupid childish dance and disrespect the other team on the court? It doesn't make sense. Greatest of all times, I don't dance. Ye pretty much, pretty much. The dance from James didn't receive much media attention because it came uh, between the four-time NBA, oh, the four-time MVP's uh, first career suspension and his positive test for COVID last week. Yeah, but guess what? The great ones they have fucking memories, okay? And they always hold the others who think that they're going to be taking a shot at that crown. They always keep them in mind. I bet you Jordan would probably have the same opinion on this, okay? Uh, Kevin Garnett, okay? Probably in LeBron James's category as well. Probably would have got a text from Shaq or Kobe if he was still around. Uh, probably calling him out for being a bitch. But yeah, man, if you find yourself in the same category as not Joe Boo, um, not Willie Mays Hayes, um, not wild thing from major league and an assistant coach from the 76ers if you find yourself in that same conversation you're not quite doing it right okay but you know what we'll take the flip side of that okay we'll take kareem abdul jabbar and kyle rittenhouse put them in the same category oh they're the greatest of all time but um they're both in the greatest of all time for uh, different shooting categories leave it at that with that said guys thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone